Can I didn't ask you, how was your Easter? Huh? How was your Easter? Oh, it was really good. We got roads and everything. How about here? Not bad. Yeah, went to, yeah, went to my mom's and ate too much food. and Yeah. That was about it. Yeah, we always have... Uh, I'm in really? charge of uh, coming up with something that's interesting. Game mm -hmm. to play with the kids now, yeah. since they don't have an Easter eggs. Oh anymore. yeah, yeah. What do you guys do now? Well, we we've been doing trivia stuff. Okay, so yeah. That's been working out pretty good. Yeah, it's an excellent. Oh yeah. So that works out real well. We started out one the very first time we did it. We you know those yeah, trivia games that you uh -huh. used to get. We used to get some cards out of those. There you go. But then we started making up our own. We found that to be a lot more fun. Okay. Then you can ask, ask all kinds of questions. Yeah, she, mix, them, mix them all up. Yeah. Oh, I got to do something real fast. Hold on. Give me a minute. Let me uh, get focused here. We'll make sure the mayor slows down. There you go.
didn't ring a bell when he said it. No, but there was a hole in the floor. <laughs> oh, okay. And I see what's held in a piece of metal, oh. like a bar, oh. three bar. Um, well, like the seat itself, though. Like there is a piece of like. I've been looking at that. That and Neil. Nope. That one? Neil. That one? Yep. What was the one about what year? It was a Yeah. Might have to start talking about it in past tense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we keep driving these old cars? Here is All right. It's seven o'clock. I'm happy to welcome you all to the April This 4th. conference will now be recorded. Sorry. DeSoto City Council meeting is quite all right. I would invite you all now to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all right, the first item on our agenda tonight is a proclamation regarding Fair Housing Month. May Mayor, may I? Roll Certainly. Call? Can we do a roll oh, call? Oh, let's do a roll sorry. call. Sorry, yeah. I skipped that. <laughs> Didn't mean to interrupt, I apologize. That's all right. Tripp? Here. Daniels? Here. Hunter Michael? Here. Mac Moran? Here. Lane? Here. All the present. All right. Now we'll do a proclamation. See, we got out of order. We were supposed to do roll call before Pledge of Allegiance. And I've already moved on. Whereas the Congress of the United States passed the Civil Rights Act of 19... Title... Eight, declared that the law of the land would now guarantee the rights of equal housing opportunity and whereas the city of DeSoto is committed to the mission and intent of Congress to provide fair and equal housing opportunities for all and whereas vigorous efforts of fair housing groups along with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development serve to combat housing discrimination and whereas equal housing opportunity is a condition of life in DeSoto that can and should be achieved now therefore in pursuit goal and responsibility of providing equal housing opportunities for all residents, I, Rick Walker, Mayor of the City of Kansas, do hereby join the national celebration by proclaiming the month of April 2024 as Fair Housing Month in DeSoto and express the hope that this year's observance will promote fair housing practices throughout DeSoto. Our next item is our consent agenda. Tonight on the consent agenda, we have approval of minutes from March 21st City Council meeting, approval of pay ordinance number 970, and approve request for special city council meeting. Um, Mayor, we have a request to table two items. Okay. So I'd make a motion that we table item 1C, approving the request for a special council meeting, and also table item 4C, being the considerate annexation of approximately 75 acres of land located at the center of Evening Star Road. All right, just correction, I think it's 4E. 
4E. I heard sorry. you say yeah, 4C. Said, it's 4E, sorry. That's right. So uh, we have a motion to table items 1C and 4E. Uh, any discussion of that motion? Do we have a second? A second. All right. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tripp? Yes. Daniels? Yes. Hunter Michael? Yes. Mac Moran? Yes. Lane? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Now, uh, on the remaining on the consent agenda, the revised agenda, we have approval of the minutes from March 21st, approval of pay ordinance. Uh, any discussion of any item on the consent agenda or a motion to approve? So move. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Hunter Michael? Yes. Daniels? Yes. Tripp? Yes. Lane? Yes. Mac Moran? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Item two is called to public. Members of the public are welcome to use this time to comment about any matter relating to city business. The comments that are discussed under call to public may or may not be acted on by the council during this meeting. There is a four minute time limit. Does anyone wish to address the council under call to public? All right, I'm not seeing anybody, so we'll go on. Item three is old business. Uh, item A, discuss property tax relief policy. Brandon? Yeah. Uh, yes, Mayor and Council. Um, the 2024 budget allocated 25 property tax relief fund uh, based on two programs in the area. I've created a draft policy for your consideration. Uh, the property tax relief program in DeSoto aims to reduce the financial burden on seniors and low-income residents. It's a two-phased um, approach. Uh, the initial phrase fo focuses on seniors and then later in younger low-income individual. Eligibility uh, criteria includes targeting uh, residents 65 and older as as, that are primary homeowners under HUD low-income guidelines with a home value at or below the medium appraised value um, in the city of DeSoto. Um, phase two extends to residents under the age of 65. Um, the, required, the requirement documentation for the application is a tax return, proof some other form of income, um, current, being current on property taxes and a sworn statement of accuracy, a uh, sworn accuracy statement attesting to the information. Um, the program is funded again through a $25,000 budget allocation in the 20 budget. Um, a staff committee will review the applications to ensure fairness and maintain transparency. Security measures will be handled to emphasize, um, to emphasize protection of privacy and to focus on the, aff on the applicant's confidentiality. Um, as I've mentioned before, the program is two phases. Um, the first the first being on a first-come, first-served basis, um, prioritizing low-income seniors over the age of 65, um, and then expanding to low-income residents in phase two. The rebates are capped at uh, $500, which is roughly 63% of the city portion of the property taxes on the median home in DeSoto. Um, again, uh, it's a two-phase approach. And um, right now, what we're looking for is council input on the structure of the program, um, and any additions or subtractions I'd like to see to it. Um, if there are no changes, um, we'll bring up an ordinance uh, the next council out with a June 1st target to accept, to accept our first applications. So with that, I will uh, return it back to you, Mr. Mayor, and okay. if there's any questions, I'll answer them. All right, well, uh, again, I'll compliment you again. I appreciate your work on this, Brandon. Uh, they did a real thorough job presenting the information for us, and I appreciate that. Um, I would now open this up to any questions that council might have or comments that they would wish to share on this. Um, I would just echo excellent job on this. And, you know, I'm really happy to see this moving forward. I think it's something, you know, very much needed in our community. Um, one recommendation I had recognizing the need of um, low income residents under 65. Um, how it's structured right now is, you know, phase two would be based on any remaining funds. I'd like to take a look at it potentially setting aside a certain percentage that would make it to phase two um, or would be reserved for phase two and then could always go back to phase one applicants who hadn't received that first come first serve the first time around. But that way we can ensure that we're reaching um, both populations intended to be reached uh, with this. And my um, only other recommendation I think because this is, you know, something new for the community and something very needed to, you know, potentially hold, um, whether at the senior center or somewhere else, hold some, you know, um, launch days Roll and up, yeah. application assistance for the uh, initial rollout of the program just to really make sure it reaches out to the 
community members who need it. All right. Okay. So, yeah. So what's the anticipation of the maximum five hundred dollars per person versus partial of that? Because if it was maximum, we're talking about fifty uh, slots, Recipients, basically. Right. Yeah. So that's a that's a really good question, um, and. I had uh, had some uh, some uh, conversations with some of our uh, members, some of our cities in Johnson County that are running this program. Um, and if you look at kind of the background information I put in, five hundred dollars is a pretty common. Um, the reason why is um, I asked our auditors on this because as I was driving into Desoto, I had this random thought of um, the threshold for um, issuing a ten ninety nine, um, and the the issue is that we would consider this a tax rebate. Um, our auditors consider it a grant, and unfortunately, the IRS would consider it would receive this funding. Um, so, if we keep it at five, if we keep it under six hundred dollars, we would not have to issue a ten ninety nine. We wouldn't be taxing um, a rebate, if that makes any but sense. But my question is, per application, how many would be probably eligible for the maximum amount versus two hundred or three hundred? Yeah, to uh, where mm -hmm. kind of figuring how far is that twenty five thousand going to go? So it, w it would really depend on um, who applies. Uh, I don't have any good data over, you know, people that would be eligible in phase one, what their household value would be. Um, if we get homes that are that are worth more, obviously we'd have more that would hit $500. If they're worth less, we would have less. I, I don't have a feel for what that would look like. Um, I spent some time on the census, census website trying to dig into that. I asked Johnson County. They didn't really have a good feel for data either. Okay. Um, two other things. I'm fine with Courtney's recommendation, although if that's going to be the case where we say let's keep some reserve for the low-income housing, then let's go ahead and move that to where they have the option to apply for it in that first round if we're already holding it back. Um, and then whatever's not taken by mm -hmm. either side it becomes available to whoever or meets the criteria in the second phase would be kind of – because if we're already holding it back, then we might as well make it available – in that first round, if we're doing a percentage of it. Um, the other I noticed, Johnson County included the disabled veterans. Mm -hmm. um, was there a reason we did not, or? Um, it, Johnson County um, was the only. They, it was kind of a request from the bench um, at the council, at the com commission level to um, have that discussion. We could certainly add them if, if you wanted to. Um, they are, to my knowledge, they are the only one that have that criteria, but it's very simple. We'd need to tweak it just a little bit, but it's something we could certainly add if council, that's the council's wish. I was going to say I'd probably lean towards that, considering I don't think we'd have a high number of that, but still with the service that they've provided, okay. if they meet the criteria. There is something that the state has in place is right there? now. Um, it's a little difficult to actually get it. There's very high criteria, mm -hmm. but the state does have something in place for disabled veterans. So state does, county does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not saying I agree to possibly putting it in, mm -hmm. just because the state level is very difficult to get. Yeah. But just thought I'd put that out there that there is something. Okay, so just so I'm hearing you correctly, disabled veterans is that that's what you were looking. For? Okay. And again, I mean, that'd be with the rest of the criteria, too, of, okay, it's household income of everybody in the house, not just, so, I mean, they'd have to meet the criteria that anybody else would. Okay. All right. Any other, anything? No. Oh. So, uh, I guess we have um, two questions just to, to resolve to get in the program then as I heard it. Um, uh, one would be, do we want to uh, open it up to um, low income people of all ages, right? That was the, and then, and then what percentage and then add disabled veterans to the eligible pool? Did, did um, you have a thought on percentage since you brought it up? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I, it's a little hard to gauge this first year. I mean, mm -hmm. I think we'll know a lot more next year, yeah. um, which is why I was like, when I was thinking about it in phases, it was okay, if this doesn't give, get used up by, you know, younger low income residents that could roll back to anyone who hadn't already received it in that first come first serve. I was thinking maybe somewhere between 20 and 30% feels right to me. Um, still placing that priority on 65 and older, but um, making sure that we're 
you know, ensuring that opportunity for the younger population as well. Yeah, I asked you before I had, but I had a number kind of in mind and it was in that 20, 25% range. Seemed reasonable. Okay. So you wanna just call it 5,000, which is 20%? I, that would that, that's kind of what I would that, that makes that's it 10, easy math. Ten right. maximums of five hundred. Right. So so in round one, twenty thousand would be available for sixty five and over, five thousand for sixty five and under, and then anything else. Whatever's left over would be available to anybody that meets the criteria right. first okay. come, first serve. Great. Yeah, we can certainly do that. I think we have consent. And then uh, uh, disabled vets would be I think added to that senior pool, that initial pool, right? I think we have consensus there too. Brandon, do you have both of those? Yep, I have uh, five thousand uh, dollars set aside for uh, for for phase two applicate phase two applicants um, when we open it up at the beginning of the year, and then adding in disabled veterans um, to the criteria based okay. on income and all the other qualifications. So I think we have enough. Um, I will work with Patrick to get something um, into an ordinance, and we'll tr get that on the next council meeting. All right, Thank, very you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item 3B, consider ordinance 2608, revising special use permittee sand and gravel extraction and concrete batch plan activities. Patrick? Yes, council, I included in the packet a memo uh, explaining um, what we're doing here. Essentially, we're not changing any of the requirements of the previous ordinance you passed concerning the sand and gravel extraction and the concrete batch plant. Rather, we're simply issuing uh, to the permits, uh, one for the sand and gravel to the underlying landowner and the concrete batch plant to Ham Inc. Ham will be conducting all of the operations on the land, so this really has to do with uh, leasing agreements between the landowner, Dave Penny, and Ham. And I know they're here in the audience if you need any further explanation. But um, when I was approached about this, it was simply an administrative uh, change. So okay. didn't feel like, um, felt like we should accommodate, accommodate this to avoid any further dispute. Questions from council for Patrick? On this, although if they're here, I do have a couple of questions for them at some point okay yep. any any other all right um, for either or who do you want to have come either or just do we know the number of trucks that are going through there at this point compared to what we have proved in the special use permit and the status on any road improvements on 83rd that have been dis or not a third but actually 83rd and leading into Gardner Road that had been discussed in the use permit. So I'll, I'll answer your second question first, and that's regarding the road. And uh, we've went out for bid on the road package, and we've, we've just selected a contractor, and that's uh, – R.D. Johnson and Sunflower Paving, uh, they're both owned by the same entity. Um, we're currently going through contract right now to get that taken care of. Our plan right now is just to do uh, 83rd Street. Um, we don't have any future plans on the ready mix plant at this point, so we're not planning to do uh, Gardner Road right off the bat here, but that's something we may uh, look to do if we, uh, if we get uh, further down the road on the ready mix plant. Um, as far as trucks, I mean, I think we average about 1,200 ton a day coming out of there. So when you think about that on, on a 25 tons per load, that's what 50 trucks a day is what we've got going in now there. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Any other questions? I'll make a motion to approve ordinance, ordinance number 2608. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tripp? Yes. Daniels? Yes. Hunter Michael? Yes. McMurray? Yes. Lane? Yes. 
Patrick, does the mayor vote on this one? I forgot to ask you. Mayor Walker? Yes. Motion carries. Test, test. I hear you. <laughs> um, all right, item four, A, consider public arts funding requests from the DeSoto Arts Council. Uh, yes, Mayor and Council, uh, this is a request from the uh, DeSoto Public, uh, from the DeSoto Arts Council for a mural on the Caprim Supply uh, Building. Um, we have representatives from the Arts Council and the artist in the house to, uh, to uh, give an understanding of of the art piece um, for the new council members. Um, beginning in 2023, the budget um, included $25,000 for a public art fund. You may have seen the various art pieces that have been around town, and that's primarily um, where that funding has gone. Additionally, it did go to support the, um, the art fair that happened last fall. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to the DeSoto Arts Council, and I'll wrap it up and talk about um, kind of the funding of it after Great. that. My name is Leanna Donald. I'm the president of the DeSoto Arts Council. This is Alex Eikhoff. Um, we have hired him to do our mural. It's going to be at the Caprine Supply Building, which is on 83rd Street. You'll be able to see it when you see the Sunflower Mural as well, if you're facing that direction. Um, Linda Lane graciously got us a matching grant from KCAIC. So, we are requesting 65, got to find it here. 62.50. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is our portion of the matching um, for the total of the mural. Um, and I believe that Brandon has got a picture of the mural. And Alex can explain everything. Sure. So this is my concept, um, and what I really wanted to do was have kind of a, a welcoming moment while driving into DeSoto um, on 83rd Street. Um, so when you see it, you kind of feel warm. You have the classic, iconic Kansas sunset and uh, a nice uh, enduring gaze from the, the mama goat there. Um, it's a Nubian milk goat. Um, and you see some, some landmarks that are um, kind of special to DeSoto. So you have the Zimmer Barnet Kill Creek yep. at Zimmerman's. Yep. Um, you got the water towers in the background, the sunflowers, which will kind of um, lead you to the next mural down the street. Um, you can actually see it from this vantage point um, at the same time. So it's kind of just like a, a, a nod to that, tip of the cap to the previous artist. Um, then you see a trail to walk around, because I know there's a lot of hiking trails that I myself have enjoyed around here. Um, and then the river there. And um, so I have the river down in the foreground, but you can also see that blue streak in the sky, and that is actually the Kansas River um, where it goes around the city of DeSoto is where the sun is. So the sun is kind of like a you are here on the map, um, if you will. Um, and then, of course, we have the, the joyful jumping kid goat in the center is kind of the focal point and he'll have a, a nice, charming smile to, to greet visitors of DeSoto and hopefully inspire some, some photo opportunities as well. Since so, Caprine Supply sells goat sure. feed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was one of their criteria that they wanted on the, on the murals to do that. So And who doesn't love goats? And who doesn't love goats, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and then if you also see um, the silhouette because the wall is kind of an odd shape, um, the silhouette that is kind of bordering the mural is actually kind of like an abstracted uh, shape of Kansas, the state of Kansas. So just like a Easter egg there. Yeah. Okay. Question from council for... And we did get approval from the owners of Caprine Supply. I've got paperwork and a contract and all that. That, and we've got a contract with him, so I think we've got all our ducks in a row <laughs> as far as that goes. Yeah, okay. Council, I, I would say just this is part of the policy, a grant. Um, 
funding grant matching from uh, as part of the allowable expenses and the right. public art fund policy. Yeah. So um, with that, I, there's a motion on the, the motion in the uh, staff report. That's it. Any questions? Any questions? I, I, I saw the, the exhibit B says 65, 62, 50 versus 62, 50. So just mm -hmm. make sure that's. It's, it's, yeah, it's supposed to be 65, 62, 50. Yeah. 65, 62, the bottom, did I have a typo there? 65, 62, Oh, I just, 50. I, I think in, I, in, in verbal stuff, I heard 62, 50. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. That's what happened. Because I, because I couldn't remember what the. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading it as she yes. was trying to figure it out, yes. so I just helped her out. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Just clarity, clarity yep. on that. All right. Yep. Any, uh, go ahead. I make a motion to uh, approve the public arts fund request uh, not to exceed sixty-five, sixty-two, fifty to support the DeSoto Art Council's mural project. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Lane. Yes. McMoran. Yes. Tripp. Yes. Daniels. Yes. Hunter Michael. Yes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. We're, All right. We're Thank hoping you guys. to have it done by the end of May, I believe. So, Great. Yes. We'll, and we're going to, like, with Discovering DeSoto, we'll try and showcase it and get lots of publicity and everything. So, should be fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Item 4B, consider resolution number 2040 on structure at 8260 Strain Drive. Yes, Council, this um, pertains to the uh, structure. Um, you recall you held a hearing some time ago. Uh, determined that the structure was unsafe and dangerous and you gave direction uh, for it to be removed from the property. Uh, you gave, I believe you gave 90 days. Um, that 90 days has ran. The structure is still there. So the resolution before you is uh, directing staff to obtain bids to remove the structure since the property owner has not done that themselves. And the way the process works is if the city uh, does do that work, um, we will then send a bill for that work uh, to the landowner and they'll be given 30 days to pay. If they don't pay, then it will be assessed to the taxes. So um, I did ask uh, Cameron to be here. Um, if you have any questions of him, and I know Mr. Thrasher is here as well, um, as well as the gentleman that I think did work on the structure before, before the work was stopped. Okay. Any questions for Patrick on the resolution from council? Any questions for Cameron? Right. Um, Mr. Thrasher, did, would you like to address the council? You're here. Uh, uh, yeah. Me and uh, this is Zuri. He's the. Hi, hello, Mayor. The one um, that was written the trailer this whole time. Okay. As you recall, I met with you last year. Yes. Uh, in regards to this situation, I uh, I explained to you that what was going on. Um, for everybody, would you give your name and? Uh, yeah, my name is Zuri Gonzalez. Um, I met with uh, the mayor. This was last year before all this got started. And it was kind of, you know, uh, taking place. Uh, I also met with uh, a few of the individuals, uh, letting them know that I was going to make some. Uh, lumber um, that needed to be replaced on that mobile home because it was damaged. But as you guys know, a lot of the lumber, when uh, water gets in there, it just ruins the whole thing. So it just, you stay taking one piece off and then it just keeps going. So I couldn't really um, repair one section. I had to go and repair the other sections. Um, so I got verbally got told that you can go ahead. It's a mobile home. You're not making anything um, new, uh, essentially, you're just replacing what was already there. I had satellite pictures provided them of the before and after, which is the same structure as you can see from satellite images from years before. Uh, and I have those with me. If you guys like me, I can provide you. You guys can access them on Google. 
um, to see the actual images in there. Now, as far as the roof is needed, uh, a lot of the houses here in the the Soto area need a roof replaced. You know, that's just the the people that were there just never made any changes. Um, my situation is um, I graduated college, trying to make ends meet, paying my tuition, have a family, two girls, and I know you said equal at the beginning. If you open up the first page that you wanted to be this month of uh, housing, you know, an opportunity of that. So that resembles with me quite a bit. And at the same time, I'm trying to make something livable to provide for my family, um, which will make it better than what it was, essentially. But when I got shut down, I mean, this caused a burden, not just on me, but on my whole entire family. Because I put a lot of my savings that I had towards this project, which I had envisioned as getting started, as being the, my first home as you guys a lot of you guys probably had your first step somebody helped you along the way to be where you're at right now and have a, a comfortable home for your family I have a six year a six year old and I have a uh, three year old with special needs uh, that requires a lot of attention right now um, that individual um, is taking a toll on my family uh, we're trying to comprehend how to connect and do a lot of uh, doctor's visit at Children's Mercy Patrick right here has allowed me and gave me that opportunity that I needed. I mean, when I saw that opportunity, I didn't think about it. I went and go ahead and I said, this is what I needed. This is what really would help me get off my feet of where I'm at and get started. Um, I know a decision has been made and you guys have made it already or uh, it's soon to be made on all that. Um, I've not processed with that as far as find it more because if getting an attorney would require for me to inject more money into something that I don't know if I'm going to win it, a situation that I, it could be a loss. So for me personally, this burn, it would put another burden into my family. It almost cost my, my, it almost cost a divorce into my family already, a breakage because I put a lot of my savings into this project. And it, it was, I mean, I didn't know how to come out and tell my wife, you know, like we lost, we, we lost. Quite a bit of our savings is right there in lumber right now, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, it, it it was it was an emotional moment, you know. It was like, man, like I'm trying to do something good, and like everything gets put back behind my. So when you open up today's uh, meeting with what you were saying, it was like, wow, it's like this is like this is if this is what the Soto really wants, I mean, this would be a great opportunity for me to show and to begin this actual project, you know, that what you guys are wanting to get out of it to have an equal opportunity for housing here in the DeSoto area. Pat doesn't charge me much for the land out there, $100 a month. I think that's really reasonable nowadays. You know, I am putting quite a bit of my uh, savings into this project. They did require me to get a structural uh, designer or uh, individual to design the whole structure, make sure everything was well put together. And also, I want to let you know, I'm not going to put my family in, 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 into a structure that I know is not livable. And it's not, it, it, it would risk my family's life in there. You know, if there's something that I care more about, it's those two girls and my family at all. So that's just a little bit, you know, about the situation that I'm facing today. And yeah, I mean, to see that go down, it's like all, all that money that I put in there going down to the trash. And I mean, sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. But... Thank you for taking your time to listen to, and you know, I'll give you a little bit of explanation of my situation today. Can we get your address? I don't think we have a mailing address for you. Um, so my physical address or where I'm living right now, I'm living, um, it's 9680 Lexington Avenue okay. on the Prospector Points Apartments. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, any questions from council of Mr. Gonzalez? I, I, I think the challenge we have is we went through the first step, right? We did the, we did, um, and and we offered the time, but the the, and I can't recall everything, but what what is there cannot yeah. remain because of uh, right. zoning I mean, and side yard restrictions and and a number of different, different things. Um, well, yes, just to, and I I had sent a letter to um, the gentleman some time ago and. The difficulty we're in, we can't, even this body, if they 
you know, wanted to accommodate you, they don't have the legal ability to do that. But, uh, sorry to interrupt, but what I was told when I initially got started, like, it's like, this is grandfather, this is what it was from back in the line. You, we can't expand this, the, the, I think the issue was the, uh, the line set back between both of the properties and all that, which that property hasn't been moved. None of that, there's has been moved. And again, going back to uh, it, it, what I was explaining to you, the, the satellite pictures of the property or what it was there before, nothing has been like stick done. I mean, it's just more of a repair, essentially, on there. I mean, it has been restructured because, I mean, it was just a lot of that lumber was, I mean, it's rotten, you know. Uh, the individual that was living there was a, uh, a military individual disabled uh, that Pat was renting it to. And, I mean, it got to the point where he was, you know, couldn't do much of it. Now, my parents lived right next to them, and they were the ones helping them. But, you know, as they're getting older as well, I mean, it's just, it's becoming harder, you know, for seniors. So that's something to think about it. You know, as seniors are aging nowadays, I mean, their houses are deteriorating a lot. And if there's no assistance out there, you know, it, they're essentially, I mean, they can't do much. So we, there's a lot of things to think about it, you know, that this opens up a, uh, a can of worms, you know, uh, if we if we go deeply into it, so my understanding was the the construction that you did was adding square footage to the structure. So it, again, going back to the the structure, I mean, and, and I didn't add any. It looks like it's been added. It's been restructured because it was the the wood was rotten. I mean, I have pictures of before and after. Like I can supply those to you guys without any doubt. Okay. I've taken. Uh, There's less the, square footage now than when they had all their stuff added onto it. Less square footage now, and then, you know, he he went deep into it, did what you guys wanted. He peered down three feet, you know, went went all this money into it, and then one of you guys wake up one day and decide, now nah, we don't we don't want that up there, and so after he's ten fifteen thousand dollars deep, put a stop on him. Um, you know that's. That's one of my main things. Who's going to reimburse him for stuff you guys told him he could do, and then you tell him he can't do it? I mean, is he just supposed to be come up double losing on the deal? Again, he, I... He wants to live next to his parents, be there so when they get older. I want him to have somewhere affordable to live. Um, if I can't fix the trailer up uh, and i got to tear it out of there, you know, you guys are talking about, you let me put a new one there if I put it on a slab. That way you can tax me like a house. You're worried about getting my two cents out of me, and then you're giving tax payments away to everybody, giving millions, millions away every year, and worried about trying to cram $3,000 out of me for taxes. Well, you can put one on a slab. It's still a damn trailer if I put one there. That's got really, to me, nothing to do with it. Uh, I just feel like it's just... Uh, the way the city's running stuff is just not good. You, you know, you sell land to people for a dollar, don't put it up for bid for anybody, then you give people tax abatements on top of that, and then try to rape somebody else. Well, Zuri, I think as I explained in the email, and I, I don't know, I mean, certainly I wasn't in communication with you when this work was going on, so I don't know. But I think as I explained in the email, even if, and this happened in DeSoto like 20 years ago. A building inspector told a builder that they could, they got a permit to build a house, and halfway in construction, it did not comply with city regulations, and it went over to Johnson County District Court, and there was a court order requiring the developer to tear the house down, despite being so, you know, with despite being told that he got a permit. So, uh, I totally understand exactly like what you're, what you're explaining. I'm comprehending every word that's coming out of your mouth. Um, but the issue is like I have numerous emails that I've you know there's there's a track of like the setback, then this, then the other. There is just like numerous you know individuals that I spoke to along the way. At first, it was mouth to mouth. You know, like I would come out here and I was like, hey, go ahead, it's a mobile home do the necessary because there's no permit required for that you know so i was like okay i went out that i still wasn't pleased with that answer because i mean you nowadays you got to have everything in written 
you know? I went to college. I'm an educated individual. I know how things are done, you know? So the fact that they told me that, and now we're going back around, you know, I, I know nothing's going to come out of this meeting, you know? I, I, and I'm not looking to get it resolved, you know? But I want you guys to understand what the situation is that the city of DeSoto at the moment is facing. We're, we're talking about a month where we want to provide an opportunity of equal housing for everybody, but we're not giving that opportunity. We're, I mean, we're saying one thing and we're doing a different thing, if you are able to comprehend what, where I'm going with yeah. this. So your, your verbal things that are coming out right now, in written and all that, actions are not the same, you know? And I am, I am a individual that I'm living this and I'm seeing it for you guys to see it. And for all those individuals that are still here, you know, to analyze and see that not everything that you see in writing is really what is happening, you know? The Soto was the city that gave me the opportunity. When I wanted to go to college, I came to the Soto because it was an affordable town where my parents could afford to send me out to college and I was working to go to college and living here in the Soto. The Soto was the, do the door that opened up that opportunity for me to have an education. When I came back, graduated college, guess where I wanted to come back again? To the town that gave me that opportunity. The town that people were inviting, the people that were welcoming to me. All those individuals that you know, didn't see me as a stranger, but accept, accepted me right away. And that's why, you know, for me, the Soto means a lot. And you know, if it was for me, I would love to remain in the town. Unfortunately, I feel like I'm being kicked out. And you know, this is just how I feel as an individual. So I get, just to be clear to the council, I'm obviously addressing from a legal perspective, but certainly if, you know, if you wanted to look further into, you know, I don't know how much, how much money are you out? Because it's clear that, count, like I said, the council can't give you the green light. Yeah, go ahead with your work. And since you were told that, just go ahead with it. That's just not something the council can do. Um, but I don't know if there's any interest. I don't know, uh, you know, what kind of funds you're out because of the project. I mean, I can provide all the receipts of the funds. What I do mean, you think, estimate? Like within close to, months? just in lumbers, you guys know lumber's pretty high this day, so close to $15,000 in lumber. So, that's what I was figuring out in my head. Um, and that's just, just in lumber, you know, and that I'm just sitting, I'm sitting there, you know, it's not, it's just, it's just hard to see all your, your savings right there, you know, pretty much going into the trash. So, uh, you, you know, his, his family come with us, you know, that, like he said, he got to go to college because of help of people like my dad and mom worked hard. They, they made their money not by gouging people on rent, by saving their money which a lot of people don't know how to do that. Stay at home, eat, don't go to the bars, don't get drunk, stay at home, go to work. We, we started renting that lot to his parents. I, I want to say back then for, I want to say it's 190 or $210 a month when they put that trailer on there, that new trailer. And that gave him a chance to get started. And we're, we're still way cheap on our rent to his family for what it should be. Places, any place else around four, 450 a month to park a trailer on it. I think we finally had to go up to 300 a month because taxes keep going up. You know, we're not making no money on these people. We're, we're, most everybody's good people we're into, just like the Skag family was for 18 years they lived with us. But only way I can keep a, affordable stuff for people like Zuri is by just try, trying to just keep it nice and affordable. But if I can't fix up this trailer... Uh, like you guys told me last time we coming in November, I'm like, I'm working 100 hours a week at UPS all Christmas time here. Um, if I tear this down, get it off there, you guys, you won't get no money for a water bill for them. You won't get no sewer charge. You won't get no trash bill. You guys already been out that money for a year and a half, but you just worried to death about me putting one on a slab to get that $3,000 taxes. So you've already lost that much already every year. I don't know if anybody ever went to math class up here, but it, it don't sound like too many have. Um, I'll, I'll just, I'll tear the trailer on down and I'll fence it and I'll put me some goats in there like everybody else does in town. If, I, if that's okay with you guys, I can, I can do that. I'll, I'll, I'll get some money out of selling goats out of it. Yeah. Pat, as you know, the, 
the talking about the slab has zero to do with the city getting tax money. It was trying to explain to you how you could become compliant and yeah. help the man out. It wasn't about yeah. I mean, that. So yeah. From well, my my standpoint, it just seemed like you're just always out for a little money, more money, and then, then give it away to somebody else. So. Kevin, I got I got a question on on well one a comment I'm you know I don't see it as a money issue or a tax issue or anything like that from my perspective this is a public safety and health and welfare concern yeah. if we've got a, a deteriorating and unsafe structure that this but is a public safety that would have been done mind. and finished so, by now though if you'd have let them just well, do what so, you told me could do so my question though is you know we had this discussion back in November mm -hmm. and we gave a period of time to have some remedial action. And as it appears from the report, no action has been taken. And so but you guys told me a, I just had to tear it down. Pardon me. Yeah. If there was no action taken, we gave 90 days to remediate uh, the problems. And if we haven't seen progress made in that period, then I question the urgency or I question the, the, the ambition or the, or, or the effort. I mean, that was sort of the warning call. And we gave a, a, a long grace period to make it happen. And we don't see any any progress. So I think that that's an issue. I, I didn't. I think I would also now like to hear from Cameron because now it raised some other questions about things like the the merits of it. Was was there additional square footage added? I believe that we had heard before that there was. Um, I would like Cameron to acknowledge what has occurred in the ninety day period that we gave to try to remediate the situation. Um, and, and speak to some of the, the ongoing uh, health and safety, public safety issues, if, that, if that's okay. Can sure. Can Cameron now? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Council Mayor. Um, so I'll touch on that first point. Um, this mobile home had two additions off of the side of it the configuration of those additions compared to what is there now um, are not the same these were two additions one of them came off the north end and one of them came off kind of in the middle area um, and they the addition that's there that now runs north to south the same direction as the trailer with the roof line tied in these were more of shed roof type um, additions where it's just a single pitch roof coming off the side of the mobile home. Um, whether the square footage is the same or not, um, the scope of this addition that has been started on is not, it falls outside of the building code's definition of repair. Um, because the orientation has changed, um, the foundation and footings have changed, uh, the roof structure being tied in, the old additions were removed prior to this. It wasn't, um, it didn't fall underneath the building code's definition of repair um, due to that, the orientation change, regardless of the square footage numbers. And then what about uh, progress for remediation in the past 90 days? Um, so no progress has been made. In fact, um, when I was before you at the November 2nd meeting is when we had the hearing uh, there was one sheet of OSB, one partial sheet on the north end that had actually come off and was no longer there on the roof. On the south end of the structure, the southwest kind of plane of the roof, there's a couple of sheets of OSB that have lifted. Um, they haven't blown off yet, um, but due to the open nature of this addition, they are prone to, to blowing off in a high wind event. And other than that, um, no progress has been no remediation efforts have been visible. Um, the state of the structure is in the same state that it was with an additional, I mean, we're looking at almost five months now of, of weathering through the winter. So, thank you. And I, if I can just clarify, the resolution that the council passed, the direction was to remove the structure given the yeah. unsafe uh, aspects of it so um, that's what needed to happen per the resolutions yeah you guys were basically telling me last time it, we had to tear it down or whatever yeah. why do I want to go up there and repair something and then tear it back down in a week or two or three um, yeah. you know just trying to resolve this with wh whatever before we have to get into legal shit so 
Oh. So I don't try, know if it makes sense. Oh, like try to explain the last time. It, really invest was. money into something that you know it's gonna come back again. So ninety days wasn't enough to figure out like a resolution for that. I mean, you can inject all the money and make it the way it needs to, but then a week after the ninety days, like hey, that needs to come down. Exactly what you were saying previously before. Um, you said that you know you've had that situation before. Do I want to inject money into something that's gonna come off again? You know, is it worth it for me? 90 days putting all that hard work and money into something that I'm going to be losing, you know, it doesn't make sense. So uh, it's, uh, again, you know, I know he said that there were some structures that, that were added and all that. I just ask you guys, look at the Google view map. That's all. And see what it, what, how it was there over the years. Google allows you to track down back all the way to several years behind, you know. Um, they drive around the, the streets maybe once a week, twice a week, you know, and whatever they see, you know, your individuals. I mean, they don't, they can't be patrolling 24 seven, the streets and the houses and properties and all that, you know, so how would they know what goes around? You know, if you would ask an officer maybe, yeah, that patrols on a regular basis, they probably are more likely to know like how a structure of a property has deteriorated over the years. So just to give you an idea of, you know, things that, I just ask you guys to consider, you know, and, and, and look at, you know, and I know a resolution is not going to come out of this, you know, it's, it's just, it's way time already into it, you know, but, you know, I don't want something like this to happen to somebody else again, you know, uh, where they're in a, a situation where I'm at my, myself, you know, this could be a learning opportunity. I mean, I learned from it. I mean, I'm, I already call it maybe a loss already. I've lost this battle. I'm David against Goliath right now. You know, what, what, what am I going to do? You know, it's, it's, it's a hard battle to fight right now. And am I going to win it? It's the possibilities are slim to nothing right now. So that's where I'm at right now. And, you know, me and the mayor sat down before all this about a year ago. And we had a one-on-one -on -one conversation about all this. Exactly what you guys have shared with you guys. I even got a little bit more personal with him, and he knows a lot more about my story. So, just something to to think about, guys. And thank you for your time. All right. <clears throat> I, I guess if you're not gonna let's go forward with fixing this I or anything. Wants to talk, uh, no, go ahead. Can, I'll let you finish. Can and you give we'll, me some we'll time to get it tore down without trying to sub it out and somebody charge me fifty thousand dollars tear that down? <laughs> I got I got vacation week <clears throat> after next from UPS. I can probably make a big dent in it that week. <clears throat> Um, he's got a bunch of lumber under tarps. He's got to get off there, out of the way. <coughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so the uh, the process, if we pass the resolution tonight, the process would be to take bids and then issue a contract. So that, I mean, that that whole process would take, you know, month. Yeah, the bids have to come back to yeah. the council. Thirty to so. sixty yeah. days. I mean, yeah. um, so. Um, I would I I would feel comfortable saying that you would have at least sixty days before we would be to any work uh, to a point where we're yeah. telling a contractor to remove that structure. Okay, uh, I just ask that you guys take in uh, accounts for telling him he could do it and sinking a lot of money into so, there. And if you're going to be able to help him out any on this deal, that's that's this the is other all all his money sunken, not have. not mine. You're not you're not hurting me by making me tear it down. You're hurting him right. and his kids and his wife. So, I mean, you can give five thousand dollars for a painting. Let's help somebody else that spent a lot of money for no reason that they thought they were doing it right. So, all right, now I'm about done. Thank so. you. Um, but I can. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Sorry. I can uh, definitely get started on it, though. So the, it's really a twofold. I mean, we. I think we're at the point that. We can do the resolution. We'll just make sure that there's, if you're if you're comfortable with what I've said, that this wouldn't happen with any sooner than sixty days. Well, it does right? take time to it get it out, get time. the bids in, make some decisions. Right. I think you know I would just ask that we keep them appraised of where we're at in the process. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and then the part two would be: Do we feel some responsibility for telling um, um, for Mr. Uh, Gonzalez moving ahead with some construction prior to having a permit? And, being out uh, fifteen thousand dollars of his savings, and if so, do we want to uh, negotiate some sort of settlement? Um, 
and that's probably a discussion that would be uh, a separate attorney client and, and separate from our public discourse right now. Is that correct? Or? Yeah, and I would just ask, I haven't seen any of the communications. You mentioned you have emails. I mean, I would, if you can get, that would be helpful to me to see what you're talking about as far as emails received. Right, what you felt you were given the green light to move forward on this project. Yeah, and the initial green light that I got, it was like last year, and it was a verbal, uh, a verbal. I explained the, the actual property, what it was and all that, and I explained that it was a mobile home and all that. So that was a green light. I never got anything in writing. After that, after I started getting more questions and more questions, like, this is not kind of, this is not normal. I was like, I already got the green light, but I'm getting questioned more. That's when I started doing things by email, so that way I have a track record of everything that's going on. So I've been in, you know, situations like that, you know, where I'm an individual that, you know, if you tell me something, I'm, word of mouth it goes a long way for me. But nowadays, we, that can't be done, you know, so you end up learning that the long way. So, um, but I do have some of those emails, like we can sit down with you. you Just know, come by. I'm it. here every day, and, and we can, can visit and share yeah, that. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I got just one quick question. Who owns the structure that's out to the south of the water tower there, down Sunflower Road, that's all fallen in? Who owns that whole structure there? That's part of the Sunflower Redevelopment property. That's part of theirs? Sunflower Redevelopment Group okay. owns that, yeah. So that that can just fall in for the last 15 years and nobody has to do nothing about that? It's, it's, a, it's part of a comprehensive uh, RECRA permit, federal remediation permit that's currently under remediation so okay. um, it's, it's kind of bundled in that that time frame yeah. so and that was long before the city annexed or or yeah, yeah obviously that, still don't own the property. That structure's been falling in for 20 years or so sure. out there now. Yeah so. yeah and until 2022 it was wasn't in the city it was in the county it's still okay. the county but still the same still. thing probably you know it's valid it was out there because I drive by it every day and I'm thinking you're on me for this little trailer, and I'm looking at yeah. this five-acre building it's that's not, falling it's in. Not yeah, a, it's not, a, not exactly. an invalid point you make. Yeah, uh, uh, it is of, part of the larger remediation efforts. Yeah, there's uh, always largely controlled by KDHE and the Corps of Engineers. Uh, always a lot, a lot of points. Uh, just one thing I'd like to ask: going out towards the Panasonic, where you come out of the rock quarry turn, there's pretty massive holes getting in the road right there. Can can you guys address those for the trucks and everything? Is that on 95th Street? Uh, on the main drag going out. No, not 95th, the main... It's on Lexington? Yeah, t Old 10, whatever you want to call okay. it, Lexington. Uh, you come around that corner, and our, our truck's air ride semi. I got to be in, like, second gear when I go around there, because when it goes through that big dip, it'll roll over if I'm going more than three mile an hour. And you got trucks coming in there wide load, and you guys got that narrowed down. Small, but that's, that's going to be an issue if somebody rolls a truck over or something there. Is it, it's not in the part where Kadon's doing the work, is it? No, no, no. Well, it, it's it's right at the intersection where you come out from the, okay. the rock quarry, 95th, so like 100 feet towards the 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 storage place right there. Okay. It, it's it's right. getting bad, you know. I mean, there's, you know, a million ton of stuff a day going over that hole, and it's just getting way bad. Sure. So. Right. And well, uh, Pat addresses that as well. I know I added on to that. Yeah, he's um, out there. I live in Prospector Points and all that. What I would ask if there could be an officer, there's a lot of high speed out there. Uh, there's a bus stop uh, where the kids come out of their uh, school, and it it, it it could be bad. And that's one of my biggest concerns, having an officer there yeah. during uh, school hours in the morning and in the afternoon because uh, it's just so much traffic from the people in the construction <coughs> coming out. It's just that's bad. It, it is really bad. Kids are playing with their balls and things like that. There's a little park out there, prospector points and all that. So they're mm -hmm. practicing soccer right now, soccer season. As you guys know, and I mean, I've, we've been practicing out there, and sometimes the ball gets out to the street, so we got to. So, having something like that, like a police officer, just to address speeding out there would be All right. significantly appreciated. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, um, any, any further questions or discussion regarding the resolution? I think. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 2040. Directing staff to make <clears throat> arrangement for complete demolition and removal of the structure located at 8260 Spring Drive in DeSoto, Kansas, and to make the premises safe and secure, and ask that staff keep the uh, landowner advised of the state of the process. Okay. Is 
Do we have a second? So, I guess, uh, <coughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tripp? Yes. Daniels? Yes. Hunter Michael? Yes. McMurrin? Yes. Lane? Yes. Motion carries. All right. So, Zuri, I would encourage you to come get an appointment with Patrick to bring your emails and your receipts and, and start that I just emailed you. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. I'll Thank you. follow up with you. Sounds good. All right. Don't bring Pat with you. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it at home. <laughs> I try. I try to stay away from you guys up here. I'm just kidding. You know. I, I mean, I I just want to live my life and do a little bit of what I want to do, and it's hard. It, it's getting harder every day in this this world. I'm just so, kidding with you, Pat. I know. I know you are, but it, like I said, it's hard. All right. So, we'll move on in our agenda. I don't want to be up here, and I don't want to be the one to complain about the trees out of the cemetery, but. You know, I see stuff every day. So, anyway. Right. Thank you. Uh, you guys have a good one. And maybe we can live next one to each other and not talk to each other. All right. Our next item is uh, consider proposal from Shockey Consulting for the Southwest Area Growth Plan. Yes, Council. This is an item that we've discussed before. It's been kind of on, on, a, on a list of things that we want to consider doing for at least six months now, I think. We brought, did bring a, a scope and fee that was prepared by Shockey <coughs> to you in July, and at that time there was some discussion about the actual area of focus for the plan and, and some of the specific components within the plan. Um, other priorities kind of took, took precedent there for a number of months, but we're back now tonight with uh, the, the results from that, a revised uh, scope and fee proposal. Um, the study area, if you'll remember, the, the intent is to address this area generally between K-10 and 103rd Street and then uh, west of Lexington Avenue. Um, and the last time we, we talked about this, uh, we wanted that focused study area to just to really just, just look at the area between Lexington Avenue, Lexington Avenue and Sunflower Road. So that's the primary focus area. A secondary focus area within this scope does extend out and actually it includes the Flint Commerce Center, but the intent of that is really to establish transportation corridors in that area and not necessarily come up with scenarios for specific uh, uh, land, use, uh, land use patterns. So the scope you have uh, before you involves Shockey Consulting um, doing that work. There are several task items that are associated with this. The scope is attached as Exhibit B. Um, we still really don't know what to call this, uh, so we're up to suggestions there. Um, but in, in essence, it's an area plan. It's a more, more detailed than we might get with a future land use map, which we obviously already have for the area, um, which shows general land use patterns but doesn't necessarily show the arrangement of potential infrastructure and potential buildings and structures and uses within that area. Um, the plan calls for a number of, of things, um, background analysis on uh, current zoning, infrastructure transportation, environmental, environmental factors, and an economic analysis. It also involves um, several meetings, presentations with the council, a workshop or two. There is a specific facilitated charrette involved, task item number six was something that was discussed specifically back in July. The idea is to bring in other technical expertise in the field of planning. Shockey's um, suggestion is that we bring in a mixed-use developer uh, type for a half-day or one-day charrette to, uh, to give us some, some feedback on this. So that's part of, of the analysis. Um, also, there's a, there's a public engagement throughout this, and um, I think Sheila, she's on the, the, the go-to meeting now, can maybe speak to that a little bit. Um, and then the deliverers, deliverables would be um, final existing conditions report and alternative scenario. This would, the intent is to go ahead and take this, involve the planning commission throughout the process, because eventually this is an area plan that we'll, we'll, we'd want to incorporate into the comprehensive plan. So um, 
the planning commission is the is the body that reviews that and 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 looks at that comprehensive plan then obviously uh, report back up to the council in terms of the in terms of the agreement this would actually be a task order contained within the 2024 services for Shockey. you remember we we've identified two specific scopes of work in 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 that um, one is the EDC support and the other is finishing up the strategic plan for us that we're uh, coming to a conclusion on. This would fall under um, a, a separate, not, not included with that fee, but a separate task order for there. So um, the dollar figure there uh, is in summary is $50,000. And we suggest taking that from the contingency allowance in the general fund. I've provided in the staff memo a summary of uh, the contingency funding items that we've already approved. So there's $1.4 million in that contingency fund. 900000 of it um, was uh, intended for the third-party building inspections at Panasonic. Uh, that was in the budget documents, so that's kind of already set aside. So you're really dealing with a $500,000 contingency. Uh, we've got the original contract um, that we approved in February, the 82nd Street Force Main Project as, as well, and then if approved, this uh, $50,000 would co also come out of that. So we're, we're up to about two, uh, $1.25 essentially. So uh, as I said, Sheila is on online there. If you have any questions for her and if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to. All right. Answer. Questions? Kevin, I uh, yeah, if I can ask a question. Um, mm -hmm. Pertaining to the area within the study, um, since the area that encompassed the location for the community center had it was subject to conversation uh, earlier we I I would suggest maybe we extend the study area where it's east of sunflower to go north to 91st mm -hmm. and bring in I, half that is owned by Merck but I think the node there where we were considering the community center across from the high school ought to be considered in that. Good suggestion. It would also encompass that interchange location. And it would too. encompass the interchange oh, location. Yeah, we're, <laughs> yes. We heard, yes. We heard Which is a information a, on yeah. factor. Yeah. So that, that was my thought out of all this. I really, you know, I, I brought it before, I really like the idea of bringing in a, a group of experts and opinions. So I really like the facilitated charrette uh, in terms of getting multiple perspectives there. So I'm glad to see that in the scope. I like it. So likely that additional area might impact the slightly? Or is it just a matter of the or discussions it, of the overall yeah, land uses? Uh, I, question Sheila? Sheila. Yeah, we wouldn't, uh, wouldn't need to do any additional um, changes with the fee. Uh, that would just, we would just include that in the planning considerations. Okay. Uh, unless you wanted some kind of, you know, uh, transportation analysis, but you're, you're probably already, you know, doing some of that with, or have done a lot of that already, uh, because of the interchanges. So uh, we'll just consider that data in terms of how it impacts land use. All right. Perfect. That's it. Um, Courtney. Yeah, I just wanted to hear a little bit more about what community and stakeholder engagement would look like around this project, especially, you know with the impact of 95th Street that's been, you know, occurring um, in recent uh, months. Yeah, so um, as we have each deliverable, the existing conditions, the different scenarios, okay. and the final plan, we would uh, have a, a short uh, presentation that would be um, uh, available online so that people could provide feedback into that. and. We could also have make that available so if um, there were already existing presentations or events that were happening during that time frame, um, city officials could gather feedback uh, using the, the online mechanism in person, though. So, so that would be a way that we could um, incorporate that. And then there are um, uh, the final presentation. Um, we would broadly advertise that so that folks could come and um, see the draft and uh, give any kind of other feedback they would have on it. Yeah, I might just throw one other thing out just for a reminder. You know, we did do the Southwest Area Plan 
2021, which predominantly was a infrastructure plan. It, was, it really didn't deal with land use at all. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have a lot of really good information, a lot of really good planning, a lot of really good budgetary information that Mike put together at that time. Uh, so this really overlays all of that and builds upon it with hopefully the focus going from infrastructure to land use. Yeah, and I might add just um, as uh, Mike and I talked about the outcome and what you would be looking for here, it, you do have already a lot of the land use developed, but we're really talking about the intensity of land use and different place types that you would be trying to attract and what makes sense from a market perspective so that you could really create um, uh, development that works together as kind of a, um, an economic hub for this area. That's kind of my vision for what this plan would, would bring forward, what you just described. Mm -hmm. Rob, any? Yeah, I have lots of thoughts. Um, first of all, I'm going to be a no. I'll just say that flat out. We spent $585,000 over budget last year on Chalky. And that is one where, obviously, Mike knew that this concept needed to come for us for approval, even though that they were on call, when everything else done for them on call didn't need our approval. So very likely it's time for a new set of eyes besides Shockey. Um, second, we just talked to last council meeting where basically a concept was brought to us about the big square right in the middle of this where a large chunk of the property already is talking about being developed in one direction um, on that front. You also have residents on 95th Street saying that we're basically planning them out of it, which this exactly does in the sense of you're basically saying, let's go ahead and create a plan for their properties. Um, I'm not saying that there doesn't need to be some consideration at some point in time. I'm just not sure this is the time. Um, I do understand Mayor's thoughts about an economic hub, and I agree with that in a lot of the areas where it would be kind of where countryside is and that, but then you're dealing with two, maybe three property owners um, beyond what we talked about last week. So I think there's a lot of other considerations that need to happen at this point before we say, yeah, let's spend it. Then on top of that, we didn't have $35,000 to do a study of the community center, which our community is interested in. We're wanting to see the growth because the growth allows us to have extra amenities. So the growth allows us to deal with property taxes. It wasn't budgeted, so we put that, or actually a minor group of us put that into 2025. But now you're coming back and saying, hey, let's do a study for $50,000 that's not budgeted. And oh, we'll take it out of the contingency fund that we didn't even have $35,000 to take out. So the timing of this I don't think is appropriate. The justification Hanna Michael gave of it's not budgeted, so how about 2025? Maybe it should be next year because it's not budgeted. So. All right. Uh, Victoria? Um, so are you saying like budget for it? Next year, I mean, if we need a budget for the other one, I was just curious where you're coming from. Yeah, and by next year, we may know more with the landowners and things like that. Yeah, because I agree with what you said about the landowners because I've heard um, a lot of people that live out there that they feel like they're being pushed out because we do stuff like this. So, but that's all I have to say about it. Danny, I kind of feel the same way as Rob and, and uh, that's where I'm coming from. I'll, uh, then I'll, I'll, I'll just share what my thought is. And, and, the, and the 80 acres that we heard, uh, an initial economic development request is kind of like what makes this, doing this before um, that would formulate a, a plan and come to us as a planning request makes it important that we know what, what this area, what we think this area should be so that the, the area develops in the way that we think it should that serves DeSoto best rather than having development decide how our, having our plan, our, our community planned by developers, let's plan it for ourselves. 
so we don't just take the plan that the developer brings we say this is what we this is the vision we have this is what we want for DeSoto does your plan fit with that and if it does great come here and do that but if it doesn't then you know maybe that this isn't the spot for you to do it so I, that's why it's an opportunity to get out in front because we don't have the infrastructure here the, you know 95th Street's not improved so we know that can't happen yet but we can uh, we can uh, we know that the pressure will be there to create that development at some point in the future so let's let's get a plan in place so that when all of the when, when those uh, property owners have sold their property but there are some significant parcels including the 80 acres that was 78 acres that came before us would start that off when, when those when those planning requests come in we have an idea of what we want it to be I mean otherwise we, we can just continue and be reactive and, and and, and, you know, let the development community decide how DeSoto is going to develop. And if that's what we choose to do, then that's, that's, a, that's one way to do it. It's not the way that I think that, that we should do it if we have an opportunity to go another way. Yeah, it, you know, it is an opportunity for, <clears throat> with the public engagement for us and the, the people who live in the area or the people who are, who are adjacent to it to have the opportunity to paint the picture of what we want the community to become as opposed to just individual applicants driving it in a way that, that is not consistent with our vision of the area. And even if we have this plan, a future land use map, comprehensive plan, and some ideas, it doesn't cause anything to happen. Only somebody who has some capital and invests in the land is actually going to make it happen. But then it gives us the framework to say, yeah, that. We don't like that. We didn't really intend for industrial to be up there by the highway. You know, we didn't intend for that to be a logistics park. We hoped for that to be residential or, or something. I mean, I'm, I'm not throwing it out, but if we don't have that area plan, yeah. and believe me, people are looking at this at DeSoto, then we run the risk of it getting out in front of us and, and getting away from us and it really not becoming what we want. I have a couple other um, additional uh, questions and comments. I think, you know, first a clarification. I think the reason I, I started by asking about community engagement, you know, to me when we talk about our vision or what we think this area of town should be, I think it's critically important that we means the, I don't know, however many thousand of us <laughs> are in DeSoto um, beyond the group of us sitting up here, um, and that it's a collectively developed plan um, versus something that we, being the small number of us up here, are only developing and, and pushing out. And I think it's an important distinction in terms of how we approach this, in terms of the scoping and the way we're going about it. If it's something that's being collaboratively developed with the community versus something that, you know, the, the, the we question, like who means we? <laughs> um, and then- I can tell you the we I meant was our community. Oh, it's okay. not, and not right. this body, That's what not I just wanted to clarify community. because there's, you know, because- that's the, that's the we I refer to. It's that, not, and the they I refer to is the development community that wants to bring perfect. their plans in and, and do what works best for them. Well, and I think that's an important, Distinction, especially when we're talking about, you know, um, some of the residents in this area that have been so heavily impacted by development, um, that it isn't a small number of us coming in and telling them what we see for the community, but rather the intention of something fr like this would be to have the entire community shape that future. And I think, you know, when we when we use we's and they's, it's it's just important. To, to me, it's important that that's the intention of this, that it's something that would be worked on collectively as a community and a vision that would be built with the input from our community as a driver. A um, couple other questions I had was, you know, because I don't have the history and I'm a newer to the council, it was referenced that this was talked about in July. Um, is there a reason this wasn't budgeted this year if it had been previously discussed and would be, you know, would seem to be something that would have been an item that we could have accounted for in the budget? 
And then I, I, I'll just add these, this other question and then we can address is, um, you know, just my other concern was just timing because we've been talking about revisiting the economic incentive plan. Um, we're working on finishing, you know, some of the other plans, master plans, and just, um, just asking the question of the whole council, what order should these things happen in? Um, is there any risk to some of these things happening concurrently and getting out of sync where we end up with a incentive map that doesn't match the plan for the future of this area, et cetera? So the last question I think would be more for staff. Is yeah, I was right? going to say, Mike. Well, yeah, so um, I had the same. I it, my concern yeah. was more from a workload perspective, right? <laughs> really, the, and that's, that's what in, that's what council, drove us to now. Council right? first, you know, the workload, um, and, but community as well. You know, there the meeting fatigue. You know, happens. It's a real thing. You know, KDOT's got big interchange stuff. We're looking. You know, that's community meetings. Community meetings. People do get worn out. General public can get worn out by that. Um, I don't know that there's necessarily a harm in doing these efforts all at the same time, other than just the the pure the sheer volume of stuff. You know, it might actually be helpful to be uh, f uh, finalizing the strategic plan while you're formulating an, an economic economic development uh, uh, policy around uh, you know potentially working through an area plan. I don't know that necessarily that is fraught. Um, so I didn't. I mean, there might be. I mean, it's a reasonable thing ask ourselves. Um, on the budget, I can't exactly say. I know we talked about it in July. Uh, mostly our budgets work through April, May, June. Um, it's not. Due, it wasn't actually finalized until September. So there probably was an opportunity to say, hey, wait, let's get this thing in the budget. And it probably was. Probably just... just and we're probably still hopeful that we would get it initiated last year. It's just the yeah, workload, yeah, staff workload issues just got in the way. Yeah. But I, I think, yeah, the, um, the concurrence of the plans and the, the culmination, it is a lot to keep track of. Um, so, yeah, it is something that we should be, we need to be careful about. Yeah, that, that's a little bit giving me pause, both from, not only from a staffing perspective, but from, as you were saying, a community perspective and a council perspective um, to have all these kind of overlapping projects. Um, yeah. Well, I guess my is, feeling is, yeah. there is there is urgency because there is so much unknown and in particular for people who may live out in this area. And the more we can get started talking about it now, the less feeling that there'll be that things are happening that we don't know about. So I think there's no more important place that we need to get some public engagement going on, get an area plan going on, than this area right here that has had so much impact. And that way people are saying, oh, okay, I get it, and I get what we're wanting to make this look like. Which was a point I wanted to include Mr. Stevens in his comments that, you know, we have no plan for this area. So mm -hmm. that was the concern that they expressed, that there is not a, a, an overall plan that any, anybody has any real idea about. It's just they're hearing things from developers that come and ask about or present different ideas. And, and uh, I think as much as anything, it's the fact that they feel that we're planning their property for them. And that's exactly what we're looking at doing here. And like I said, I'm not opposed to it. I don't think the timing's right. I think we've talked about downtown revitalization and the challenges there and the property owners there and that, okay, maybe there's another place for an economic uh, driving center and this may be a good spot for it, but then really where it needs to be is landing in the middle of two or three property owners, um, one of them being Dave Rhodes with that property on the south side and that's where I think there's, this is a little bit premature, but then also Kevin's talking about the arguments about need plan, need plan, but when it came to the community center that needs a plan, needs concept, and needs time, because it's going to take time to build, it went in the budget, so it was no problem to say in using his own argument that that should be in the budget for next year. So do we need to plan or do we need to make sure it's in the budget? Well, and I it can't be both. So at that point, there's a duplicity there uh, based upon desire. And so there's some answer, questions that need to get answered. 
The other thing is the quote that came to us in, thir in uh, or was given to the city was for $30,000 last year, and this one's for 50 as well. But like I said, that's the least of my concerns at this point. So. Well, I want to, Rob, I want to address, a, I take it that your, your duplicity comment was directed at me. Duplicity based on desire. And said, no, that's, said, absolutely not, that's absolutely not the case. And in part, I think this area plan, then part of the reason why I made the recommendation of extending the boundary to 91st Street is so that we can look at alternative areas for where should a community center be. Then we can talk about how to program a community center based on the location that it's at. So I think the discussion of where should a community center go is absolutely central to this, to this conversation. So it's not duplicity. The fact that it needs to be budgeted is, but also the study to do the community center would be independent of where it could be located, although the location in this case is an opportunity that we've had, but that opportunity also is dependent on KDOT. So, and this study isn't going to know what KDOT's going to do. It's not, but it can because say... KDOT's decisions are... Is at least with the intersection are totally dependent upon the railroad facts, which makes part of that premature. Well, and we're not planning people's land for them. We're planning what the community might be. Parcels of land are already for sale. They've already got for sale signs up. So if we don't have some sort of an idea of what we want that to look like, then we're going to have something that's brought to us that we may decide we don't want there. And it's hard to say that without a comprehensive planning document. And when you talk about rezonings, one of the elements is consistency with your comprehensive plan. This is dialing in this area into more detail so that we can have that as a tool to work with. But our comprehensive plan and strategic plan also include Kill Creek and K-10, and you had no taste for that at that point either, so. Oh, I do, I do totally have taste for K-10 and Kill Creek, Rob. So the thing we have right don't here. Don't misconstrue my words. Is, is we have, we have, um, I don't know if I'd call it imminent, but we have a legitimate uh, plan to get this area sewered, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and we know that that is going to unlock development to happen. Um, and, and we don't have that necessarily. That's the other driving that, that creates the urgency. Because I'm in my mind, I know that once that, that sewer is there, then it it's going to happen and we're going to be reacting to whatever whatever's brought by the development community. So the opportunity to to look at this holistically and and come up with uh, have our community come up with a plan that we think this area should should be um, is is lost because then we're just uh, we're we're in the throes of reacting to planning applications from from developers and and then we'll be blamed for not having a plan. Right. And the first, the, <laughs then> the, the very first plan say, that comes in. I didn't in. know that that could be next to me. Yeah. Um, so I mean, that's why I see the urgency of having taking action now, so that we're prepared when when that sewer activates that area, uh, as we believe it will. Um, that um, it's just the next element um, to uh, to being prepared. But I, I think I'm, I'm done talking, so I don't, if, um, I would be open for a motion. Um. Just um, before we move to Certainly. motion, just a, a thought or a recommendation if we move forward with this, um, you know, and I, I do agree that we want to have community input into shaping the future of this area and do so with intention so that we aren't um, reacting and at the mercy of what I, I don't want the future to happen to the residents of DeSoto I want the, the residents of DeSoto and our community to shape our future that's what mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and <laughs> and I think that that's what we should be doing um, one of the requests if we move forward with this for the threat or at some point in the feedback process, I, I would love to get some input from a, you know, ideally similarly sized or similar community that went through a time of rapid growth 
who is looking to maintain some of the characteristics and character of that community and, and did so with some intention. Because to me, that's at the heart of part of what's facing us is as we grow, maintaining the character, the uniqueness, and the community that people moved here for and, and deeply value. So um, that's more of a request. If, if we move forward with this, it would be to you know try and have as part of that bring in a community or two that's maybe been through a similar process or can share what that has looked like. Well, I'll throw a motion out there just to see where we're at on, okay. the, on the feeling for wanting to do some comprehensive community planning, and that is I'll make a motion to approve Task Order 2024-1, the Southwest Growth Area Plan, an amount uh, not to exceed $50,000. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, um, you had mentioned a modification to the scope. I don't. Uh, oh, Courtney, yeah. Let me. Uh, uh, yeah, to uh, and, and my and and you did Kevin right to. Yeah, um, included in the uh, intention for the the task order scope would be to uh, extend the um, primary. Uh, Focus area north to 91st Street for that area that is east of Sunflower Road, and also modifying then the uh, red area, the, the secondary area, to include that as well. Okay. Do you agree with that? Yes, I, I agree. Your second. Yep. All right. Any any discussion? Further discussion of the motion? Roll call. Mac Moran? No. Lane? No. Tripp? Yes. Daniels? We've already spent 585000 in excess on Shockey, wrong agency. Planning, yes. Timing, no. So, no. Hunter Michael? Yes. Motion fails. So I guess for those, I, Rob was pretty clear on his. So Danny, what you're saying? No, we don't need to plan or. Uh, no, I. Or no, you're you're okay with just uh, reacting to dealing with develop. I mean, going with the comprehensive plan and reacting to development plans as they come yes. in. Yes, that's correct. Victoria. Um, the money part of it and. I know we're going to spend money on looking at this, and most of these people don't even want to develop out there. That's the thing. Like, they don't even want that, and we don't have the money. So. I guess I probably disagree with you on most of the people that there's probably the um, people I have talked to. Okay. Let me rephrase that. The people I have talked to because there's in this town. half of a d dozen of those parcels are already zoned commercial on the north side of 95th Street in that corridor. So. Um, for the last 20 years, there's people that have had some vision other than residential or that use, you know, happening, seeing something like that happening in that, in that corridor. Um, Mayor? One thing, Courtney was wanting an update on the contingency fund. We went a million, over a million dollars on Chalky last year, 585 of it was at least from the contingency fund. We have not gotten that report. And that's where, I mean, you've given us the breakdown of just the three items. Is that all that's there? Where, where did the last year's go with 585000 that was over what council approved um, as far as that goes? And that's not necessarily saying answer it now, but <clears throat> that was something that was asked for um, with some of the discrepancies that came up with the overages last year. Um, so if that can be brought to a future meeting, that might help clear up what money is available and where. Okay, so um, to be clear, this is just the 24 contingencies mm -hmm. that I provided. Um, you know, that obviously those numbers don't roll over from year to year. I can give an accounting of the 23 one, happy to do that. But that didn't factor in. Those don't roll over from year to year. All right. Um, next item on our agenda is consider agreement with Mega Case Corporation for the well water replacement project. Uh, yes, Council, this is a project that we've bid out actually once before. Um, 
those bids were rejected because of the, the high dollar amount. This would re-drill well nine, which is on the north side of the river. There's a map here in the staff report. Uh, we have three wells that are currently active on the north side, eight, nine, and 10. Uh, there's also well seven, 11, and 12 that are inactive. The intent is to activate all 12 wells, or all, all six on the north and all six on the south, 12 wells altogether. Eventually, um, did determine that well nine uh, needed to be redrilled to bring it up back into service um, uh, to its uh, original capacity. So we uh, sent this out for bid again, um, and we actually only got one bid this time. It was a Mega KC Corporation. Their bid this time was a slightly uh, a slightly lower than the original bid, uh, but still um, just under a million dollars. So very very close to their original bid. Um, we've looked at some of the reasons for that higher price point, and um, those are articulated in Joe's Joe's memo. Um, essentially, the redrilling and the electrical equipment um, essentially were 73% of the of the cost there. This uh, will be funded through the development agreement proceeds with Panasonic. Um, so we are still, you know, we're communicating these costs to them, uh, still have that funding agreement in place. And so that will come out of there. Um, recommendation is for the council to approve the con contract with Mega KC in the amount of $951,500. Okay. Any questions from council? And this is coming out of the TIF funds and reversible funds, or no? Yeah, it's the Panasonic agreement. Yeah, so this is the, it's part of the water plant yeah. project that's that we already have funds for. Yeah. And that's why I was making the clarification. Mm -hmm. Is this only for well nine? Just one well, yep. Being that it's nearly a million for one well, is, are there plenty of funds in the Panasonic agreement to cover the rest of the wells? Um, or are we going to be running into a yeah, right. budget situation? Well, I can't promise that we're not going to run into a budget situation. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, but the, the, this is the last well that we are planning to have to redrill. The others, uh, uh, in according to um, recent pump tests, pump draw tests, look like they can just be rehabbed without having to be redrilled. Um, so we're hoping to rehabilitate the, the rest. So no promises there, obviously, but um, for now, this still fits within the budget of the of the improvements that we've communicated to Panasonic and that we have that mechanism in place. Any other questions? Are we ready for a motion? I would. I'll make a motion to <clears throat> uh, recommend staff and city council, or I'll make a motion uh, to approve the contract with Mega KC Corporation in the amount of $951,500 and authorize the city administrator to execute the contract. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Tripp? Yes. Daniels? Yes. Hunter Michael? Yes. Lane? Yes. Mac Moran? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Item E is tabled, so uh, item five, executive session. We do not have any other come up. All right. Advisory report, city administrator. Uh, nothing tonight, Mayor. All right. City attorney. Nothing for me. Thank you. Brandon, you're the last on the list. Unfortunately, I do have two, two things. I apologize. Um, the first one um, is just kind of a follow-up from tabling of, of item um, 1C. It was my attempt to streamline a process um, that it didn't work out, so I apologize for that. Um, on your desk, you'll see the uh, just a paper copy of the email I sent you um, on Monday, um, just kind of outlining um, some of the upcoming workshops. Um, I, if you notice, we had tentative dates for April 11th and April 25th, um, for one for the economic incentive policy and then one for the strategic plan. The remaining um, uh, will not be happening given council's vote. Um, Council Member Tripp has noticed that she has a conflict on April 11th. My recommendation would be to um, basically shift everything down so we would have on uh, April 25th, we would do the economic incentive policy 
um, workshop, and then on May 9th, which is the next kind of off meeting, um, do the strategic planning with Shockey. Um, but I'm open to any other suggestions. I do not want to presume. <clears throat> So if there are suggestions, um, we can talk about that. And what I will do pending this is put together an item with the correct dates and the correct times um, for 1C for the next council meeting and just take care of those. And you said May 9th? Yes, May 9th, yep. That would be an off Thursday. And a cancellation went out for the one on Yes. We can mm -hmm. wipe that one off our calendars. Yes. Okay. Are you hoping to have answers tonight? I can I can email. Um, I, I can email I as can long as we I can probably give you answers tonight. Yeah, is, as far as general, everybody. Yeah. Twenty fifth and ninth work for me. Okay. Twenty fifth and ninth work for me. Okay. We have consensus on We're the get com commit those that far out. Right? Oh, there. Are we just doing those? We're just two? looking for the next. Yeah, just, just not, okay. commit yeah. on the next. Yeah. yeah, I can't. I can't project <laughs> yeah. that the, far. So the, the other items were Southwest Growth um, Area Workshops. Um, so and so, those. yeah, since <laughs> pending the, assuming the, uh, looking at the vote, we don't need to have those. 25th and 9th work for me. Okay, perfect. Uh, oh, is that April or May? April 25th, oh, I, May 9th. Oh. I think. May 9th is okay. The next one would be the 23rd, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 23rd. Mm -hmm. May 23rd. May 23rd. That would be the next available Thursday. I think we'll just have to do some doodle polls or something. I don't know. But we're good for May 9th for everybody, so that can be the incentives. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could. Certainly, I could send. I could send an email for the for the shockey, and we could kind of come back um, if there's consensus that might work too. We'd probably try to do a poll. I tried the doodles before; it just hasn't worked. Yeah. But I could certainly try again no, I don't um, if if that's kind of if that's what council would like. Um, we just hadn't hadn't been successful in the past. Do we want to look at non Thursdays, or is that not an option? Uh, just we, knowing that yeah. we're getting pretty far out yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah, that's a fair point. I know Wednesday nights are very open for me usually. Um, I'm pulling up the Tuesdays normally can be fairly open in the evenings. Yes. For me, it's just a matter of it's as a, long as I'm in town. Yeah, <laughs> it's a shop. It's a smattering. To say if you want to send out a poll to include some additional nights. Yeah, I can certainly do to that. To try and get at least the incentive discussion earlier Is, than May 9th. Yeah, I'm and just then, getting. Then May 9th can be used for one of them. Yep. Okay. I can certainly. I will. Um, I will do that, and um, I may be um, bugging council members that may not be responsive. Just FYI, but we will. I will send put together for the next council meeting. So what I heard was. Um, we're not going to have anything on the 25th as well, but we'll have something on the 9th. <clears throat> Probably the, be the strategic planning. Is that what I heard? If we can get something in April sooner, then yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I will send an email with that note and send out a doodle, and um, I'll look forward to emails from me. Okay. And then the other thing I have, just real quick, um, Mike, it is actually um, in the Google Drive. I put it um, oh. out. Um, uh, Council, we have uh, we've worked with the mayor. And Mike, it's the very last item on the in there um, to come to come up with kind of a revised plan for the Riverfest soccer. Um, the total the total amount um, of it is uh, is a more reasonable price tag um, for the city. Um, we are ready to do design work on that, on that design. Um, we are asking for one council member or one member of the governing body to sit on the. Um, review committee. So what you what would happen for the new council members is you would receive the RF uh, the RFQs, review them, and then score them. Um, and so Jay or myself will send out a spreadsheet um, and a link to a Google folder that has all that. You'll review them, you'll score them, and you'll send them back um, to whoever is the designated person, and we'll score them and then come back with a recommendation. Um, for those of you that that were here um, in the past, we did the same thing for the Sunflower Road Trail and some other projects we've had. So um, two two questions: Has yeah. that been through the park board yet? Yes, this has been to Parkwood. Okay, how many pads? Soccer pads. It's one. Right? It is one pad. 
Um, it is one pad. Let me pull up my notes here real fast. <clears throat> so it's uh, it's one pad, um, 400 by 400. Um, it's irrigated, um, perimeter fencing, and I, it's showing, um, that is showing a paved parking lot. It's actually going to be a gravel parking lot. Um, we've kind of reached the end of the task order with PEC, but our proposal has a gravel parking lot. How is that configurable as far as soccer fields? Um, it, it gets us all the fields that we need. Um, and so with that, what we'll do is we'll move them around to, uh, to make sure that the goal mounts don't wear out. Uh, it's, a it's a grass pad um, and basically a scale back project from what we've, what we've looked at. Park Board has looked at this. They have uh, reviewed it. We we're going to have um, at least one member of Park Board on that review committee as well because they've done a lot of work on it and a sprinkling of staff as well. The thing it has as well that allows it to, to function is it's irrigated. So it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be able to recover between seasons rather than um, our non-irrigated fields that we have to just uh, lay off or not use and let them recover. This is a irrigated manicured soccer pitch it's and it's also uh intended to have a a, a soil mix or matrix underneath mm -hmm. there that supports good grass growth and and so that we can overseed between seasons irrigate and get that turf back to a good condition but it's does that configurable to the soccer needs that we have now yeah in terms of large and small fields and does it is there a larger plan that it can expand into? That whole, I mean, that yeah. whole, the, whole, the whole larger plan still exists as it was before. Oh, as it was before. Yeah, the, the, the plan is um, to size the irrigation for expansion okay. um, when, when we did that. So in five or 10 years, if we need to do a phase two, which would be a second pad, the irrigation would already be ready. We'd just stay into that and expand onto that. As is the park, it's just like all it did was just chopped off parking mm -hmm. to, to meet the needs, and chopped off soccer to meet current programming requirements. Yep. And this is, this is what we really need to build. If we're gonna build something that meets our current needs, this is what we need to build. So um, if there's anyone that, that would be interested, I, I know um, the mayor had worked on this. I know Rob, you say I'm on the pork either, board. I'd yeah. be willing, but if somebody else is wanting to, I'm happy to let them as well, but I'm willing to. Yeah, the only thing I'd add is that the timeline, the responses come back tomorrow. Um, we, we would like the, um, the rankings by the following Monday. Um, that kind of gets us back on our timeline um, to, have, to have design and everything completed by um, the fall. So Monday the 8th or Monday the 15th? So it would be, it would be Monday the 15th would be, would be the deadline of when we would need that back from, uh, to the review committee. I, I'm willing to. Okay, I will um, pass on your name. With that, Mayor, I am done. I have all right. for taking up everyone's time. Seem to be jumping. Council comments. Danny, anything for the group tonight? Nothing for me, Mayor. Thank you. Victoria? Nothing. Thank you. Rob? Thanks, you had Cameron out there if you wanted to give him a chance for comments. Yeah, he's not on the list, so. <laughs> okay. Um, a couple things came to mind in talking about the contingency funds and asking you to kind of give an update on the 23, 24. We haven't heard for a while, and this is one where we constantly hear kind of the Panasonic and the inaccurate information about you gave away our taxes to make this happen, which isn't accurate about that, but there's benefits to it, like the 700,000 of the school district, things like that. There's a couple other things that we've done in the past as a council as far as approved that have impact on the city funds that would probably be good to come back to us with an update on and that would be we did approve raw raw water usage or treated water usage for panasonic for construction so how much has the construction water usage impacted the revenues and what have we seen from that Along that lines, we get franchise fees as well. So have we seen an increase in franchise fees in the electric use and the things over at Panasonic? Um, and you might add to that, I'm sure I'm missing some other things, but basically kind of give us an overall impact of, I mean, you did it with the sales tax. So I'm kind of saying, let's do it for with everything. With yeah. everything yeah. of show us, not just, and include the sales tax in that too, of kind of a recap of, okay, look, we've seen sales tax increase because of this. The water usage is increased and the council approved 
uh, rate fees for Panasonic for bulk. Here's what that has actually resulted in. Franchise fees, if they've gone up because of the construction, things like that. So when we talk contingency fund, we also have the idea of, and whether it be Interest. we come back and revisit a study of this area at a later time, whether we come back and revisit the um, community center funds, whether it be we have overages on well, I mean, whatever it is, where we get a picture of the actual impact that Panasonic has had on other funds and other revenue streams at this point. Yeah, really good point. Um, I think I sent an email out a couple of weeks ago about uh, the de what, what was funded in the development agreement, mm -hmm. so the, those things, so that's another. Um, interest on idle funds is another mm -hmm. um, that we could report that kind on. Of yeah. Give us the fiscal impact that we're seeing from it and how it's impacting us as well. So. Yeah, sure, good point. And like I said, that kind of, was a side spur thought that came from saying give us an update on the other is we're far enough into this we should be seeing some impacts so let us see the impacts mm -hmm. okay. that's it Courtney um just one small comment more clarification from some of the dialogue that's happened um you know community center and community center funds have come up and you know the in the discussion of extending the space being studied, community center was mentioned, um, just clarifying that as a council so far, what we have agreed to do is to look at a study next year and the funding of that study, I think was around $25,000. So just clarifying for um, kind of where we are in that process, just um, since we all track this from meeting to meeting, but for those who either are following discussion or watching um, just that clarification of where we are in that process of um, evaluating the community center and the you know potential for the future so other than that don't have anything thanks Kevin yeah I'd like to <clears throat> make a request for a couple items to have Planning Commission look at so I'll throw this out there and Mary I know, I don't know if you need your concurrence or what but one of the things I would like Planning Commission to look at is the regulations on uh, residential lot size, um, like minimum lot width. When we're talking about housing and cost of housing, affordability of housing, one of the things that drives it is land area and our regulations regarding um, <coughs> residential lot size has been static for maybe 15 years or more, <laughs> maybe 20, probably 20 years or more. Whereas the market has changed a lot, we do allow for variability in lot width and density coverage in, by a, a planned development type of zoning. But I think it would be worth looking at some modernization of our basic regulations um, to look at. Um, I would I would like him to look at a narrower or a smaller lot width, smaller lot area, and also you have to adjust setback. If you narrow the lot up, you, you can't eat it all up with setbacks. So um, that's one thing I'd like him to take a look at and maybe freshen up. Now, that may be one of those kinds of things, pulling that string. You start to untangle a number, of, a number of other things, but that may be okay. That conversation may be okay. The other one would be a little smaller one, very specific, is be um, in the interest of renewable energy and sustainability. We've I think we've had a couple of... Um, uh, variance requests for ground-based uh, solar electric generation equipment, side yard setbacks, side yard or rear yard setback. Um, so I'd like to ask the, the Planning Commission to discuss the viability of allowing uh, ground-based solar electric generation equipment in side and backyard setbacks behind houses where a privacy fence or a privacy or screen is provided. Screened. Yeah, where it's appropriately screened. So. I just like him to consider that as a as a matter of uh, something that's allowed rather than a variance having to be perceived. Randy, so, can we get that in there? Uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I have it in the meeting minutes. And, agenda. So, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll talk to Brad. I don't go to the planning commission meetings well, that's anymore. That's right, Edgar. Yeah. So, <laughs> I will. Uh, I will talk. I'll talk to Brad when he. I think awesome. Brad's still on a cruise when he gets back. All right. Thanks for the consideration. Appreciate it. Uh, I don't think I have anything tonight. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Yes, sir.
This conference is no longer being recorded. Yeah, so we gotta, I gotta figure out what times work. So basically, we, yeah, so yeah, so we, what? There was like thumbs up popping up on my face on the video. So we have on, um, on the, on the, yeah, it was like some, little, somebody was liking it. Okay, I just kept seeing it on my that face. That would probably be somebody out there watching it that was liking it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's like, why does this keep popping yeah. up on my face? Was it, was that the sounds? Because I, I heard like there were sounds. Maybe. Like, okay. I thought people were popping in and out of the meeting. Oh, oh, okay. Huh, okay. So I'm not going to do some cheap thing on the night. So, well, so we're going to try to find a day. We're going to try to do, so let me go back. So on the, uh, the only Pin views on the video right stream is, tonight. Oh, wow. Right Eight now, concurrent. That yeah. could be 12 the peak. economic yeah. Ooh. Um, but I don't know. Wait, how do I get 10 views but 12 peak? No, I just, like, just closed it. I'm not sure. Is it average? I don't know. Um, so it's like I don't know. Why don't we, why don't we put something yeah, on that's the my goal. And that If you don't mind, because I have both my phones. If we're, if I can find a day. And if I still do that, my schedule gets all day. See ya. I understand. See you later. My mistake is... On one of my devices, I have like my work account, my personal account on two different. I'm supposed to tell you about the same uh, uh, for microbreweries, the bill. Okay. Gavin told me to tell you. Okay. So he won't get arrested? No, I mean. <laughs> so he won't get arrested. <laughs> so now he can do it legally. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they're still doing it. Okay. So I'm gone that week. I will, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at some days, figure out what, what, figure out what makes sense. Yeah, I was told okay. to tell you that then they passed it. I think it goes okay. to the... I'm going to 20 seconds. Okay. 26. Okay. 20 seconds to 26. And that, that'll be one she doesn't veto. Good for you. May 27, 26. So, okay. Yeah, I, I need to consolidate, because on one device I have yep. okay. them all on one calendar, on another one I don't, I keep forgetting which one. <laughs> You're fine, where are you going? Um, oh, okay, that'd be nice. The free time of the year. What nights yeah, are good for you? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Or what time? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't Hang on just a second. Yeah. What times are good for you? Hold uh, on. Uh, yep. can still hear us. These are... Are we on and off no. YouTube? All right. So you can still hear us. Yeah, so really? The, the <laughs> How on earth? Yeah, I, I wonder if it's on the...